So in this segment, we're going to be talking about a Brexit row could prompt um, exodus of senior scientists from the UK. I mean, this is something we spoke about before, um, brain drain. Um, I used that cool Yu-Gi-Oh card um, on the thumbnail. But um, there is something I learned more recently, which was actually quite important, which is that the, the trade and cooperation agreement didn't guarantee a UK uh, place in the Horizon Agreement. It had agreed it in principle, and that means that it's not guaranteed. Um, and that's something I didn't actually know. So regardless of whether the UK paid into the Horizon budget or not, the UK's place wasn't guaranteed at the time. So if the EU want to get you know get rid of our place in Horizon, or more appropriately, you know block our place in Horizon, they are okay to do so purely because legally the UK wouldn't have a leg to stand on because our, it was only an agreement in principle. Um, it wasn't guaranteed. So yeah, that's something I didn't know. So now I know, and you also know if you're listening. So um, that's an important point to make because I've made uh, I haven't said that in the past. So the UK is facing an exodus of star scientists with at least 16 recipients of prestigious European grants making moves to, to uh, making plans to move their labs abroad. With these European grants as well, it's not just the money they receive; it's the prestige of the grants. Um, this is something the article talks about a lot. That these um, grants are seen as you know the Champions League of grants. That this is the top table essentially. This is the the highest level. Britain's participation horizon has been caught in the crosshairs of a dispute over the protocol, uh, meaning that 143 UK-based recipients of the European Research Council fellowships, that's a mouthful, this week faced a deadline of either relinquishing their grants, so essentially giving the money back, or transferring it to an institute in a, an eligible country. So they, they might have to just either send back the uh, grant money or they would have to move or send the uh, grant over to some another institution, another university potentially, uh, for them to carry out the work. And whether the scientists that actually got the original grant can continue to work on it would depend on uh, visas and things like that, which is, um, which is sad to be honest when these people work so hard. The government has promised to underwrite the funding, totaling about £250 million. Um, so the government are claiming they're going to um, basically compensate these scientists, but that's not going to work, especially when you know the government wouldn't have anticipated us to be kicked out of Horizon, in my opinion. So you know the fact that the, far- the government haven't got the farmer subsidy sorted out um, when they were meant to have that planned out tells me that they will definitely not be able to help these scientists out. You know, Paying unplanned subsidies is not going to happen. A growing number of scientists appear likely to reject the offer and instead relocate along with entire teams of researchers and that's a huge problem for the UK. We're going to lose a lot of you know highly skilled um, highly skilled scientists who are going to be you know studying a wide range of things and selling their services to the EU essentially. Um, this is a huge problem for Great Britain, let's be honest here. The ERC um, said 16 academics had recently informed it that they intend to move their lab abroad and are in negotiations about doing so. These researchers and some others have been given an extension before their grants are terminated, so that makes sense that you know they're looking to move um, into the EU, for example. Um, so you know they they've got a bit longer to um, decide what to do with the grants. Uh, Mortis Treek, who is due to receive two million euros over five years from the ERC to study the malaria pathogen, and again you know that this sort of work can do great things for countries that. Um, have to deal with malaria you know malaria is a horrible horrible illness um, and it's very easily to get infected with it in certain countries um, I hate mosquitoes um, and you know this person's work could be detrimental to trying to help people with malaria I'm not saying they're guaranteed to make a breakthrough but they've got a shot at doing something with it um, and the simple fact is their research has been put at jeopardy because of the British government is you know this person Mortis Treek is among those contemplating a move. He said a major downside of the UK offer was the lack of flexibility about moving the funding internationally. So I'm thinking that you know if he wants to work with um, other uh, other institutions, other you know with other scientists, he won't be able to move the money across to say Germany or Italy, for example, if the scientists are based there. He says it personally makes me very angry. The UK RI really put up a wall for scientists to move the funding. It's all nationalist stuff. I mean he sees straight through this. It's not about science. Um, that's just wild, you know, because Britain wants a replacement for Horizon an Alternative, which is probably going to fail worse than Galile- the Galileo project. The Guardian heard from three other uh, academics who planned on moving but didn't want to be named because they didn't want the, to annoy the nationalist UK. One, a biology professor at a top-ranking university awarded a €2 million Euro grant saying UK participation in EU programmes has already been hugely disruptive. And, you know, these are people who need the funding to get on with their work. If they don't think they can get the funding, it's just going to cause massive issues. She says, I feel heartbroken to be put in this position. Either I leave at a huge personal and professional cost, 
or I stay and I miss out on career changing opportunities. And these are people who may have to end up leaving their families um, behind, you know, their wider families behind in order to move to a new country where they're going to have to get used to a new environment and new colleagues in order to carry out their work. But, you know, this is, you know, not necessarily saying it's the opportunity of a lifetime, but it's not a million miles away from there. This was supposed to be a massive achievement and recognition of our standing as scientists. Instead, I feel hugely stressed. Um, she says, another said the offer to match the two million euro funding she had been awarded to research the roots of populism in the 21st century. I mean, I, I, I don't know if the British government would be re replacing funding for that, given that uh, we have quite the populist government. Um, you know, this money would not replace the prestige of ERC grants, which are viewed as the Champions League of academic fellowships. And for those who don't follow football, the Champions League is the pinnacle of football. It's not the World Cup. Um, you know, winning the World Cup is a lot of national pride, but the Champions League is a very hard trophy to win, and there's a lot of club prestige. And in my opinion, um, you know, calling it the Champions League of Academic Fellowships tells you that it's the pinnacle of science. At least, you know, the way these people are describing it is the pinnacle of science. I guess winning a Nobel Prize would be, um, you know, the pinnacle of science, but in terms of, I think, grants or fellowships, as they call it, this is the highest level. The ERC is a label that is internationally recognised as excellent, she said. For me, as a Latin American immigrant, it's really something that changes my career in Europe. And, you know, this is a person who won't have as much affiliation with Britain, given that she's from, you know, she's not from here. So moving would be far easier for her to do. And if she wanted to move back to Latin America or to the USA or to any other country, really, having the ERC as a, you know, that was granted to her, you know, an ERC grant um, would show that, she, you know, she's a very talented scientist. Um, and that's kind of uh, credentials, should we say. That would show that she's got the credentials of a very uh, high-level scientist. A third major um, scientist who plans to transfer 2 million ERC grants to study the response to animals to climate change. And again, that's really important because animals are really badly impacted by climate change. It really messes up a lot of their patterns um, as the world kind of warms up or cools down. My, she, uh, this person says, my main motivator for choosing to move is that I lack trust in the UK government, governmental institutions and processes after what I've witnessed since moving here. And, and to be fair, yeah, I, I kind of agree with that. I, I don't have a lot of faith in them either. The problem is I can't move anywhere. The loss of these academics is a blow to the UK government's proposed bold global alternative to Horizon. I mean, it's not going to work because of the prestige of these um, ERC grants have. That's the main problem they're going to face. This week, the science minister, George Freeman, called on the EU not to weaponise science for politics. I mean, you guys are the ones who weaponise Northern Ireland. You guys are the guys who weaponise everything. Don't try and play, um, you know, the good guy here. The UK is ready to press ahead with this plan B option if the dispute isn't resolved around the protocol. I mean... OK, you're just giving the EU more evidence to not keep us in horizon because we can't be trusted because a lot of this science will be vital as well. Some of this might be more classified science stuff. Why would they trust us with that? Others were remaining in the UK said they've been left in limbo with little clarity on whether the UK RI funding will be available. And this is, like I said earlier, the UK government couldn't even sort out the funding for uh, farmers. They couldn't sort out the subsidies for farmers, even though they knew they had to in the first place. The UK government wouldn't have had banked on us being kicked out of Horizon. So there's no way they're going to actually be able to give out these um, grants on time. You know, this gentleman here was awarded £3.1 million grant to study the effect of human-caused climate change in the timing seasonal events in Oxford's Witham Woods, which is very specific, hella specific. They were saying, we've heard nothing at all, which is one of the disturbing things. It's like a black hole. And obviously, because he's trying to, you know, study this in a certain season, um, you know, seasons pass on. He's going to have to potentially wait a year. You know, Sheldon said the uncertainty around the funding meant he couldn't start uh, recruiting for PhD students for uh, postdocs and technicians needed for the project. Um, and, you know, he might have to wait till next year to start the project, which is just ridiculous. Um, you're talking about, you know, a hand-picked team, really, at that point. PhD students, uh, for, for postdocs, technicians, he'd be looking for a hand-picked team to really help him sort this out. And you can't be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to pick all these people and then get the funding next year. No one's going to care for that. They've got other stuff they want to do. Um, a spokesperson for the Department of Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy said successful awardees do not need to leave the UK to receive the funding. I mean, OK, but again, it's just not... I, I genuinely... Some of these like token government statements make no sense. Um, the guarantee that eligible successful applicants will receive the full value of their funding at their at their UK host institution for the lifetime of their grant. But the problem is that it's not just about the money, it's the prestige of receiving these grants. And that's something the UK cannot replace. You can replace the funding, sure, but you cannot replace what they have lost in terms of, for their careers, a massive boost. 
getting these grants evidently is a massive boost for them um, and the UK cannot replace that with just money and so that's why I can see a lot of scientists especially the ones that weren't born in Britain just leaving because they have no affiliation here the main reason they would have came here is to study um, and to you know work in UK institutions and now those institutions you know aren't working for them why would they stay here it doesn't make sense but um anyways i'm gonna leave it there let me know what you think in the comments below like comment share subscribe support the channel on patreon if you can and hopefully i'll see you in the next one